Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy. Last time, more Purple Coin missions. Today, more Purple Coin missions. We're gonna have the Toy Time Galaxy, and warning you now, this is gonna be a bit of a longer episode. I wanna get the rest of them out of the way now, that's the Purple Coin missions that is, as well as the last Trial Galaxy, and we have some pretty long ones in today's episode. I'll try to cut them down as much as possible and make them not so long and horrible. But we also have some pretty terrible ones in this one as well. So, let's just get to Toy Time Galaxy as quickly as possible. And by that, I mean we're going to it right now. And, um, so many people have trouble with this one. And I can understand why. Because it is difficult. Um, it's the first one, I believe, on my first playthrough of the game. Or first couple plays of the game. That I really had trouble with. Um, but after so much time, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm gonna brag and say it's not that bad. Well, okay, it's not that bad, it's not the correct term. Uh, not hard? Not hard's not the correct term either. I don't find it very difficult. <laughs> Jesus. Um, just be very careful about where you're jumping here, because these yellow tiles will spin around, these green tiles will disappear, and you don't want to have so many green tiles disappear that you can't get back to the start, or it's like a journey or trial making it back to the start. You want to make it as easy as possible once you've collected enough coins. Um, there is no set path that I usually go on. I just sort of go wherever I want and hope it works out. So I can't really give you advice there. Usually it works out for me. I don't know if it's just muscle memory or knowledge of the area or whatever, but yeah. I usually don't worry about the yellow tiles all that much because they're not going to disappear. They're going to be a little bit more difficult to jump on. I'm sorry, I hit the mic there. Um, but they're not going to be impossible. So I don't really worry about them. The green tiles, though, those become pure empty space. So those are your main worry. Grab this life here as well if you're having trouble uh, focusing into this area. I might as well grab it. I, I guess not. Okay, whatever. Not a big deal. Um, at least we have this great music to back up a somewhat frustrating level. Um, there are more than 100 coins in this level. I meant to long jump, and I, just, I, I screwed that up. So... The problem is, I'm not taking the exact same path, I'm taking a very similar path, but I'm not doing it in the exact same way. I'm just sort of, again, I just don't really think about what I'm doing in some which is a good and a bad thing. Um, actually, you know what, it's pretty much just a bad thing. I should probably think about what I'm doing more, but as well, I just sort of just go on autopilot in this level and sort of go wherever I feel is right, because... There, it's not a set path. There's not really a best path to take. It's just... There's enough purple coins, as I said, I was trying to say. There are more than 100 in this level itself. So, you don't have to collect every single one. Also, it's not a smart idea for me to jump there. Also, know that the green tiles, like, hitbox doesn't disappear immediately as soon as it starts shrinking. It pretty much stays there until it disappears. Also, we basically won this. If I could collect purple coins, that'd be nice, and I'd just skip them. Yeah, that's 100. Um, the timer's still gonna go down, but the timer's never really an issue for me in this level. It's mainly, you know, dying due to bottomless pit or doing do it due to this poison on the floor that you sink into and die. Oh, one try, one death. That's not bad. So the rest of the levels we have for purple coins are mainly exploration-based ones, and this is probably the best one out of what we have left. Freeze Flame's Gal Freeze Flame Galaxy's purple coins on the summit. So yeah, this is an exploration based one, takes a while, and that's why I said it's going to be a long episode because we still have two left that are going to take a while. When you come down the slide, turn around immediately and collect these two right behind you. Kind of dickish design, but you'll probably see them eventually anyway, so I guess it's not too bad, it's sort of annoying more than anything. Uh, while we're doing this, I don't have much to say, we're just sort of going around this mountain and collecting stuff, and I'm going to be trying to do it as quickly as I possibly can, but I don't know the like optimal route to do it. So. Story time! I know I've been telling stories, but that's just because I don't have much else to say during Purple Coin missions. You should know that I'm making- you should know that I've been making videos for a long time. Not like super long, um, not since like the dawn of YouTube or whatever, but since like... I want to say I started seriously LPing. Seriously LPing, like... <laughs> that's a stupid term, whatever. In like 20... Not 2009? Maybe? It's hard to say. It's hard to remember. That's when I started, like, doing it a lot more. Um, they weren't good. You'll never find them, I hope, because I deleted them all. I hated them so much. They were all terrible. 
I recorded for a long time off a camera or off of shitty software on a computer. Um, they're absolutely, absolutely terrible at these. I would not suggest you go try to f track them down, both because it's probably impossible and because uh, they're terrible and you'll hate them. Uh, but I did a Mario Galaxy LP back in the day because I was a little kid. Of course, I'm going to LP it. It's a game I love. And I mean, I, that's also why I'm LPing it now, but it's also like a much better LP. <laughs> but, you know. When I got to Freeze Flame, I spent a whole video here. A whole video. I didn't even complete the level. I did not even complete the level because I could not find the last two purple coins. Um, why I didn't... Why I put that video up, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. But I put that video up for people to watch because apparently it was entertaining. Maybe it had really good commentary in my, like, 11-year-old mind or something. I don't know. So, in the next video, I, I went off screen. I actually went off screen, which amazes me that I did this. I, I don't think I would put forth that much effort back then. Um, and found those last two purple coins. So, instead of just, you know, starting up another recording saying, Oh, here they are. And, like, putting that into the video. Probably because it was already uploaded. I, I redid the entire mission on camera. But that wasn't bad enough. What I did to make it entertaining to watch again, you know, instead of just, you know, not having them watch it again. You know, the very few people that were watching for whatever reason back then. Um, I, s I was editing in Movie Maker 3.0, which I, I'm amazed even, like, exists because most people just use, what, 2.6? And that's not a bad software. I mean, it does the most basic stuff. And you know what? That's not terrible. It does what you need it to do, and, you, you know, for your starting editor, that's fine. I would suggest moving to, like, Camtasia or something as quickly as possible. Please don't let me die. Okay, I need a coin then. Um, you know, as quickly as you possibly can, because that's a very simple software, but it does the job pretty well. Um, and then move on from there if you really, like, care that much. Anyway, um, yeah, I, what I did, the Movie Maker 3.0 added an effect that allowed you to, um, to just spin the video 360 degrees for as long as you wanted. I did that. I did that to the entire video up and I maybe even to the point where we got the the purple coins and I spun that video too. Why? I don't know. That seemed really entertaining to me and funny. I I have no idea why. It's something I would never do again. And I'm sorry that I did it even though like I'm sh the video is not there anymore. I don't think anyone watched it or remembers it. I mean, well, they remember it now, maybe that I brought it up, but, like, Jesus. Such a stupid decision. But I thought it'd be funny. Mainly because as a kid, I thought, oh, it's random. No one's gonna expect me to put up a video where I'm rotating it the whole time. And so it's funny. No, it, no one's expecting me to do that because it's annoying and no one wants to watch that. <laughs> Except for me, apparently. Oh, please, please don't die. Please, okay, thank God. <laughs> I... I was such a bad, like, video editor as a kid, and it's weird that now I want, like, to be my job. That I was so bad at it as a kid. And had such terrible ideas. I don't know, as a kid I also tried to LP Mega Man and Base. Which, I don't know why, because that game's pretty terrible. Um, especially if you're playing as Mega Man. Luckily I was playing as Base. I think the first episode, I tried to record that LP, like, 20 times? <laughs> With SPF. Me and SPF would try to record a lot of things together. A lot of them never came to fruition. Uh, and I don't remember why. If I just could have deleted them by accident or some shit. But, uh... Yeah. The first episode of that video series was always called Base is God. Um... I don't know. <laughs> because he can shoot in multiple directions and... Multiple... Multiple directions and dash and... And fi rapid fire and it's awesome. I don't know. Alright. I was a strange child who didn't really think things through properly. I mean, I, I was happy with him. I don't know. Is that, is that good enough? I don't, I don't know. I feel like we're missing a lot of purple coins, by the way. Like, I shouldn't be missing this many. I should have a lot more. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like I'm not. And so, I'm worried. Cause now I don't know where the rest of them would be. Um, of course, I'll cut out me looking for them. I'm not... I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing rotate 360 degrees for 20 minutes. But yeah, the last two purple coins, well, two more purple coins that are a little bit more difficult to find, are off the summit, you have to jump down. 
and then they're here. It's a really strange place for them to be, to be brutally honest. But, you know, that's where they are. So I'm going to go find those last six. And by last six, I mean last four. There's one right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's one there. Let's grab that, maybe. Uh, we'll cut back to when I actually can get that. So you need an ice flower. That's pretty obvious. And then we need to get this. I don't know where the last ones are, though, unfortunately. This is just coins. Useless. Useless coins. Okay, so up here, where these bridges are, they're just, they're just past these two toads while I'm sleeping. Pretty, pretty easy to make an area to miss, actually, because they don't really look there. But, yeah, that's where they are. Now, hopefully, they don't die on the way there. And, okay, we're good. So that took a lot less time than I expected. Thank God. Because we still have a lot more long ones to to get through in this episode. I'm not looking forward to it. So, this is not only one of my least favorite levels, but one of my least favorite Purple Coin missions. Purple Coins by the Seaside in Sea Slide Galaxy. You know how I criticized Sea Slide before? For basically being a tube, not tube, a oval that you went around, a circle, and it was really boring because of that. Yeah, now I have to do it again in one level, and we can't swim really because we have to be a bee, which is a slow power up, and we have to fly across these clouds, conserving our flight, collecting these purple coins. It's really, really, really terrible and boring, and I hate this purple coin mission so much. These, this and Deep Dark Galaxy, which you're going to be doing next, unfortunately, um, are, like, the prime examples of how you don't do 100 coin missions in levels like this. Um, they're just absolutely frustrating, because they're boring. If you die, you have to go all the way through, and that's not too likely to happen in, um, in either level, to be brutally honest. But sometimes you might make a stupid mistake, you might fly off the ledge, or just fall off the ledge in general, or whatever. And then you'll die, and you'll have like 50 coins, and usually in any other level, that wouldn't be too big of a It'd be frustrating, but it would be like too big of a problem. You can get 50 coins again like, I don't know, a minute and a half. In this, it takes like three minutes. And it's such a fucking pain. Especially your first time, where you're not positive where these purple coins are. Even like, after your first time playing this game, you're not going to be sure where they are, because you're not going to remember this, because it's so bland. And it's, it's so fitting that two of my least favorite levels in the entire game, Sea Slide and Deep Dark, have my absolute least favorite purple coin missions. It is fitting, it's just I wish they were better. I don't know what else they could have done for this level or Deep Dark. Deep Dark, I think they could have used that puzzle area or something, the cube area we've got the secret star from Abu. Maybe they could have used that area. What the hell is going on with the camera? I've actually never had this issue. Um... I don't know, there's so much more they could have done to make this fun. <laughs> Maybe, like, they could have used the, um, the hexagon planks. We didn't have a purple coin mission in one of those, where it was just, like, a little a pathway you went along, and you were, you had to collect all the things and not die. Why didn't they use that? I don't know, that would have been fun? Probably. <laughs> Sorry if I seem mostly negative about this, but I don't have much good to say about this, besides the music. I, which, you know, I already praised in Beach Bowl, so that'd be redundant for me to do it again. But it's also redundant for me to keep complaining about it. Uh, I just wish in levels like this, you could have gotten the Red Star and flown around. That would have made it so much better and faster and more fun. One, because, you know, you don't ever get to use that power-up. It controls really well. It's fun to use, just in general. It would have made this faster. You fly faster. You don't have to worry about your flight meter, you have to worry about time, which, you know, if there were red scars, red scars scattered, red stars scattered around the level, that wouldn't be an issue at all. Uh, I just, that power-up is so underutilized, and I wish you just could have used it in missions like this, and see, I missed a purple coin over there, I see, so now I have to go all the way back and get it for one purple coin, that, is just one stray purple coin. <laughs> Hate this level so much, I've never met anyone that likes this level or Deep Dark's purple coins. There are people that like Deep Dark and there are people that like Sea Slide, and that's fine. I never met anyone who likes these levels because they're so boring. I'm sorry I keep harping on that. I don't know what else to talk about. I was gonna say Yu Gi Oh! I know nothing about Yu Gi Oh! I used to watch Yu Gi Oh! a lot as a kid. 
and One Piece, but you know, One Piece, the dub, turns out it was pretty terrible. I didn't know that as a kid. At some point, I did realize that it was terrible. I think they might have changed voice actors, and me and my brother were like, no, we hate this. We're done watching this. Um, so yeah, that was a thing. But I remember we were watching Yu-Gi-Oh! And Kaiba was going to tell a story. And then it cut to the One Piece intro, and we thought Kaiba was telling a story about pirates for some reason in Yu-Gi-Oh! And we didn't understand. We didn't realize there was like a new show. Or something, I don't we were dumb. We were dumb kids, me and my brother. Or maybe we just... Realistically, I mean, he's gonna tell a story, and then it cuts to some weird story about pirates. That makes sense. That we thought Yu-Gi-Oh! just changed tones to pirates for some reason. I mean, realistically, it doesn't make sense. Why the hell would it do that? But then again, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! And they do a lot of stupid shit in that series. So, you know what? It was possible. It was possible. I don't remember when I stopped watching either of those, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, One Piece. One Piece I sort of fell out watching. I cannot stick with the series for very long like that. Like, TV, I don't really watch it. Don't really watch TV, don't really care about anything on TV. Uh, so it's really hard for me to keep up with it, and always has been. Uh, that's why I don't really watch anime. That's why I don't watch any like TV series or anything. I just, I can't care enough to keep up with it. Because, like, inevitably, I'm going to miss an episode. And what do I do then? <laughs> like, I, if I can't find it online, that is, what do I do? Do I... I it's so weird, because, like, if you miss one episode, you're fucked, because you can't... You don't know what's going to go on, especially if it's an incredibly story-based show. If it's just, like, a sitcom, which, you know, I don't really watch sitcoms, but theoretically, if it's that, then, you know, who cares? Very rarely does anything super important happen story-wise. And even then, they usually build up to it for, like, the entire series, so whatever. Um. <laughs> like, any any marriage in any sitcom is always built up for, like, the entire series. And it's like, oh, when is it gonna happen? When they need an idea for an episode. Right. <laughs> I don't know, it's... I used to watch sitcoms a lot as a kid. Mainly because of Nick at Night. Like, George Lopez. I would watch George Lopez a lot. Um, I don't know why. I just, I guess I had nothing else to watch. So I watch fucking... George Lopez. I don't know. <laughs> we watched Full House as well. That show was terrible. It's stu I, well, I love it to death because it's stupid. But I hate it because it's stupid. A, a lot of sitcoms from that time were stupid. Like they just—they were all the same. Basically, like, they taught a lesson, and all of them did it in like. They got, they got to the point where they taught a lesson in a different way, but it was always, like, the same lesson. <laughs> and I don't know why, like, they ever were so popular. It was, they, they all came out at the time where, like, oh, it's the family time, whatever, family thing. Gotta care about your family. And, like, now families, that's not a, well, I'm not to say they don't care about each other, but it's, like, it doesn't have to be taught through television to care about your family. It's, it's just something you should probably do. It, Especially if they're nice to you, you should probably care about them because you know they're they're good people. I don't know, it's sitcoms are an interesting concept, really. I don't. What was the last like main sitcom made, like in the vein of some shit like Family Matters and Full House? What was the last one made? Because I'm really interested in like does it follow the tropes? I really want someone like kickstart a like a revival of that kind of sitcom. I don't know. Maybe, like, a revival of it in a jokey way, kind of like, um... Oh, shit, what was that one, um, Kung Fu movie that came out that was kickstarted? And, like, ma basically made fun of, like, old Kung Fu movies. I really can't remember the name of that. Kung, Kung Fury? Was it Kung Fury? I it was something like that. It was really funny, and I loved it. And now I can't remember the name of it, and I'm sad. I don't know. I want that, but for sitcoms, essentially. I'm gonna die if I don't get to the water here, so we'll have to find another bee mushroom. Okay, I think there's one right here. This went a lot faster than I expected, thankfully. Granted, we're 21 minutes in, but I expected this to be a long episode, and you know what? Only, what, we started this around maybe 13 minutes? Seven minutes for Seaside is pretty good, in my opinion. That's a pretty decent time. Well, yeah, there's only one more right there, thank god. I thought I... If I had missed one, I would have been so angry because I don't know where the hell it could have been and I'd have to run around this whole area. That's also annoying if you miss one. You have no idea where it is. It's not like it's 
like you just go through a short linear pathway again. God damn it! I had to go to the stupid flag. I thought that was important, but I thought I thought maybe this would be a purple coin. Ah, uh, see you then. There we no, please, please, please don't you dare do that to me. Uh I thank God it's over. Just thank God it's over. Well, it's not quite over yet. We still have deep dark galaxy to handle. Thankfully, it is the last purple coin mission. Plunder the purple coins. And honestly, this one doesn't usually take as long to me as Seaside Galaxy, because Seaside Galaxy is a much larger area where you have to go around and collect them. This is a much smaller area, it's pretty much just that sunken ship area, but it's so... boring! <laughs> it looks so dull, and the music is so dull, and it's slow, and uh, you're, you're swimming for the most part, and... Like, swimming in games is always slow, except for Majora's Mask, well, mainly the original Majora's Mask, really. Um, because they made it even slower in 3D, where you had to use magic to swim in Sezora. Um, it's, uh, it's a thing. I don't really love it. I don't love any swimming controls in any game, really. I'm trying to think of games where I like swimming in it. Coming up blank. I'm sure there's one, but... I can't think of it, except for the original Majora's Mask at Zoro Link, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, Deep Dark goes generally faster, like, we already have 15 purple coins, that's not bad. But it, it's, like, the music is boring, it's, the music is fine in short bursts. Not for, like, a five-minute period of just running around collecting things like this. And I don't know what other music, I, what other music appeared in Deep Dark, and they're gonna use music from that level, because it's easier. And it makes more sense. But I really wish they just used maybe the purple coin theme. Because they've done that anyway when, like, they hadn't used music from a level proper. It's, eh. It's a thing. I really, I, it's, again, I've never seen anyone that likes Deep Dark Galaxy's purple coin mission. There are people that do, I like Deep Dark. I don't know why this dude's dancing in the spotlight. I think he's finally awake if that's the one's always sleeping. I don't think it is, actually. Isn't the green one's always sleeping? I don't know. They're toads all the same to me. Especially after Sticker Star where everyone's a toad. But this one's diving. It's cool. So, we fell off the ship. That's not too bad because there are purple coins around and under the ship. Uh, in the water that we have to grab. So, I might as well do it now. Um, this level kind of reminds me of Clanker's Cavern if it wasn't fun at all from Banjo-Kazooie. Um... <laughs> Where you're kind of going underwater to collect things and do stuff, but it's not well designed. And clearly it wasn't like intended for you to be swimming around the ship and finding things because it's not fun. Um, but with Clanker's Cavern, I I find Clanker's Cavern fun. Hell, I find Rusty Bucket Bay fun in Banjo-Kazooie. I don't know why, because it's not really that great of a level, but I like it, so... In general, though, I, I prefer Banjo-Kazooie to Tui, because Tui, as much as it's, like, really good, and did improve a lot of things from the original, like, the, the powers are better. Being able to separate Banjo and Kazooie with that one power-up is really, really cool. Uh, and there's a lot more to it, but I kind of feel like that's what hurts banjo Tui is that there's so much, and it's just not incredibly designed well around it, in my opinion. I mean, it's not terrible by any means. It's a fantastic game. It's just I prefer Kazooie, um, where it's a smaller, more focused game, opposed to Tui, where it's a larger, um, I, well, I guess less focused game. Like, I kind of like being able to go through an area as and hundred percent it in in a game like Banjo, and at least for the most part, I don't. A, as you go further in the game, here's how it should be, in my opinion. Here's how it should work. At the beginning of the game, you should be able to 100% the first two or three worlds, depending on how many worlds you're going to have in the game in the first place, um, to get players eased into the game and get them used to how it works. The middle worlds, you shouldn't be able to 100% because you might need abilities from later things, or... Why can't I get this? You might need abilities from later worlds, or you might need certain things to happen in later worlds for you to get stuff in that world. Um, and then the final levels, you probably should be able to 100% because, you know, you have almost everything and everything has happened in the levels, basically. Banjo-Kazooie does that, except for, like, Freeze Easy Peak, you need the, uh, whatever shoes to run, fast, uh, to run faster and be boggy in this race as Banjo-Kazooie proper. 
Banjo-Tooie doesn't have a single world, I believe, that you can 100% without going through another world first. Which isn't inherently a bad thing. Like, I just don't like it as much as being able to go through and just play the game 100% it. Like, if Banjo-Tooie would probably be better if I could at least 100% the first world without um, needing a future power-up or future thing to happen. And then I feel like that would be better. I don't know. It's personal preference. I know. I know so many people that like Tui more than Kazooie, and they have very good reasons. They they like it bigger, and they like it the way uh, Tui is, and the improvements it made. One thing Tui did improve, legitimately improved, is that you don't lose all your notes if you die in the level. That's sort of an issue I have here as well, where you die if you lose all your coins. And I don't know where the last four are. There's two here, and three. Well, there's three here basically. Uh, but the last one, I don't know. Granted, the good thing about Deep Dark is you can sort of just look around the area in first person and probably find it because it's such a small area. Um, but also it could be underwater in the two areas where there's like an underwater section. Um, so that's the issue. Maybe it could be in one of these boxes, but I assume not. Um, we're going to go find it. Turn around at the beginning of the level and there's a goddamn purple coin right behind you. I hate that type of design so much. Oh, Jesus Christ. But that is it. That is every single purple coin mission done. I probably should have spaced it better where we didn't do all the terrible ones in one episode. But we're not... Excuse me, Lantern. I didn't mean to run into you. We're still not done with the episode yet, unfortunately. Luckily, it's not nearly as long as I expected it to be. I expected this to go upwards of 40 minutes. We have the last trial galaxy to tackle. And what better way to, you know, end off a video of frustrating and boring levels, but with a frustrating level! We're getting we're going to rolling gizmo galaxy. We have Gizmos, Gears, and Gadgets. And it's another rolling ball level, as you could probably expect from the other Trial Galaxies using motion control gimmicks. But, uh, we got Billboard there if we want to speak to him. Maybe it's a different board in that sort of connotation of name. I don't know. This is difficult because there's a lot of narrow pathways, there's a lot of enemies for you to bounce off of. And that can kill you. If you go behind this bridge on foot as Mario, there's a blue rupee made out of blue star bits. So if you want to get that, cool. It's a nice little Easter egg. Uh, so that's, that's fantastic. Would have been cool if they actually used like five star bits to make it, but by shape of the rupee, that's basically impossible. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> Considering like it's, it has six points. You couldn't really use five rupees to make that, or five uh, star bits to make that. Now, suggestion for this level. Take it slow, or else you're going to die, like that. Okay, well back here. Um, actual suggestions. Yes, take it slow. Allow the level to sort of carry you on its own, like that. You want to just let the level do its work for you. Or do your work for you, rather. Avoid bouncing off enemies, especially the bombs, because those will kill you pretty easily, especially if you're not careful or not coordinated. And it's very difficult to be coordinated with this ball rolling thing, because you're using a Wii Remote as a makeshift joystick, and it doesn't work all that well. I mean, it kind of works, I guess, but not perfectly. Are you kidding me? What could I have done there? The stupid Goomba got in my way and bounced me into a bottomless pit, and I couldn't have done anything about it. That was fantastic, and it's gonna happen again. No, it's not. I'm gonna stop it. There we go. Now that I'm expecting it to happen. So this is annoying. I uh, I think you can make that jump if you have enough speed, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna be very careful. Jump, not jump, but roll onto that. Take it slow, and then rush to the end of the level, and that's it. We are done. That is 120 power stars. Thank God. <laughs> Why did I fill the last video with the most frustrating levels that I despise? I don't know. But it was fun. And that is it. 
So, next time, guys, now that we have all 120 power stars, we will go to the center of the universe and fight Bowser. And finish the game. Again. Yeah, Galaxy Complete. Fantastic. We'll get the last Grand Star then. See you... And, well, yeah, I guess see you guys then. Rosalina, I... Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot there was this whole dialogue bit. Are you finished off the center of the universe? No, we're not. Please be... Wow, that music just died quickly. I really like that music as well. But we'll hear it more next time, when we actually go to the center of the universe. See you guys then.